Well met, shipmates. Tis I, Abel Seaman Barlow. When I cast my mind back many a year to my own first days at sea, I always remember what a devil of a time I had learning the ropes and the names of each part of the ship. There's no easy feat for a greenhorn, I can tell you. With all of you fresh hands coming aboard, I thought I ought to show you around so that you may better learn your duty. From the dock here, you can see the whole of our fair vessel. And don't she have lovely lines? That way lies the front, or what we would call the bow of the ship. And t'other way sits the back, or the stern. When working on board and we have to go up toward the bow, we call it going forward or forward. When our duty takes us back toward the stern, we call it going aft. To shorten from after, you understand. But let's have done with this idle traipsing about on shore and go aboard. Here we are all the way forward, in the bow of the ship. See you this long spar behind me? Tis the bowsprit, and that smaller spar lashed to the end of it is called the jibboom. They hold up sails called jibs. Now look you at this fine anchor, lashed athwart the larboard gunnel. <laughs> but fie, perhaps you do not yet know the difference twixt larboard and starboard. Aboard ship, we do not say left and right. Instead, we use port and starboard. When facing forward, port means left and starboard right. Larboard is just an old-fashioned way of saying port, but we don't much use it anymore because it sounds too much like starboard. I know this may all seem rather bewildering at first, but fear not, all shall become clear soon enough. Our anchor, for example, is to my right, but it sits on the port side of the vessel. Know you the purpose of an anchor, shipmates? When we wish the ship to stop, we simply drop the anchor, and it catches on the bottom. When we desire to get underway again, we just raise or weigh the anchor using this windlass here. Now let's go a little further aft, and I shall show you the mast and Providence's guns. Here we are amidships. This stout timber here is the mast. Its job is to hold up the sails, that they may catch the wind and carry us along o'er the waves. These long upright lines here are called the shrouds. They run up to the top of the mast to help and stabilize it. When we have to go aloft to perform tasks such as putting a reef in a sail, we climb up by use of these ratlins, which are tied across the shrouds to form a kind of ladder. How should you like to go aloft and run out along a yard in the very teeth of the gale? Wild work indeed, but it must be done. But enough of spars and rigging. These are Providence's guns. They are four pounders, which is the weight of the round shot which they fire. When cruising for prizes, Providence carries 12 of these. I shall tell you more about the guns at another time. But for now, let us descend through this hatchway and into the hold. This is Providence's hold. Tis here that the crew sleeps and where we stow our provisions and gunpowder. It may look a bit empty now, but during wartime it is not uncommon for Providence to put to sea with 70 or more souls on board. Add to that barrels of ship's biscuit and salt pork, casks of rum and fresh water, garlands of shot and kegs of powder, and you have a tight squeeze indeed. Tis small wonder that Navy regulations allow no more than 18 inches per man in which to swing a hammock. When underway, these lanterns are forbidden. Instead, we rely on these deck prisms, which let in a small amount of light from the deck above. Now let's head back up on deck ourselves. No doubt you wish to see the aft cabin. This is the aft cabin, the captain's private quarters. Tis here that the ship's officers take their meals, as it would be most unseemly for them to mess in the forecastle with myself and the rest of the foremast jacks. It may seem a bit small, 
but this is as close a thing to luxury as you shall find aboard a sloop of sixty-odd feet. And now, if it's all the same to you, I think we'd best be on our way. I have no business being in the captain's cabin, and I'd just as soon avoid the defaulter's list, and a dozen at the grating that would surely be my lot were we discovered here. At last, the noble quarterdeck. From this lofty point of vantage, the ship's officers issue their commands. By long-standing naval tradition, the windward side of the quarterdeck is reserved for the captain. That's whichever side the wind strikes first. From up here, it is easy to see the whole sweep of the deck and make decisions regarding the sailing of the vessel. This long spar here is known as the boom. Its function is to hold the mainsail out straight so that we may catch as much wind as possible. Just don't forget to duck when we come about. This pole here is called the tiller. It connects to the rudder, which allows us to steer the ship and set a straight course. On larger ships, there would be a wheel, but for our purposes, a tiller serves very nicely. For defense, the quarterdeck is lined with these swivel guns. They generally fire a hail of small iron balls known as grape shot, which is excellent for sweeping clear an enemy quarterdeck preparatory to boarding. They may be small, but they are deadly little machines, I can assure you. Finally, we have the binnacle. This box contains the ship's navigational instruments. When sailing on the vast and featureless ocean, knowing your location and heading is a matter of life and death. So these instruments are extremely important. Unfortunately, they are also extremely delicate. So a strong and well-built binnacle is an absolute necessity. And that, shipmates, is the Providence, the first ship authorized by the Continental Congress to sail in our new Navy, and as fast and weatherly a little ship as we could any of us wish for. I do hope that you will feel a little more at home aboard her now, and I would also encourage you to refer to our glossary provided on our website to refresh your memory on some of the terms we have discussed. I shall, of course, be returning in subsequent weeks to show you more of the Providence, but until then, shipmates, I must bid you all adieu.